Hello and welcome or welcome back to Cast On, a knitting podcast where I talk about my finished objects, my whips, some yarn acquisitions and some more knitting things. My name is Ellie, I'm from Austria and this is episode number 37. Hello, hello. I am so glad you could join me again. I hope you're all doing well and you're not too, too stressed with uh, Christmas gift knitting. I know I am a tiny bit, but we'll get to that in a minute. Today I am wearing my Kiara sweater by um, Rebecca Klo, the Crea Bea, and I love this piece. I finished it in the last episode, I believe, and I have been wearing this ever since because it is so comfortable. I will definitely get this yarn again. It bloomed really nicely and it's really warm and thick. This is a Fernavolle lamb's wool. If you're interested in it, you can check out either my previous episodes or my Ravelry page. I try to have all of the information on Ravelry that is necessary, like the size, the yarn, etc. And when I blocked this garment, a lot of the grey uh, dye came out, so I was very, very worried that it would bleed into the white. Uh, so I just, after I left it in the bucket to rest, I flushed out the water and squeezed it until, like, whilst the water was running, until there was no dye coming out anymore. And I think I did a pretty good job. There is no, like, greyish whitey um, sections and it all looks really really good so I'm really happy with this piece I can only recommend it the second thing and that is so so exciting I am really really happy to be able to announce that I am officially an Hyris Makes ambassador she has started a brand ambassador uh, initiative where uh, people can earn a little bit of a commission on the side and uh, I'm able to give you a coupon code as well. This is something completely new to me. I have never done this before but I absolutely love her patterns. If you don't know her, Iris is from England. She lives in Cambridge as far as I know and she makes beautiful designs. I have made quite a few of her um, patterns before and I love them. Especially the t-shirts are my absolute go-to in the summer and she has made uh, this beautiful cabled vest and brought out the pattern and I love this piece to bits. If you are a long time viewer you probably know about it and you know what I'm talking about because I've been wearing this piece to work quite a lot because I love it so much. So if you're interested in any of her patterns I can honestly only highly recommend them. They're really well written, they are size inclusive and they're very timeless as well. I will leave the referral link uh, in the description down below. Just for transparency, I will earn a little bit of um, money on the side through the link and I am able to give you 10% off the order when you use the code MYBELLY10. So thank you so much Iris for letting me in this uh, community and uh, letting me talk positively about your patterns. I'm really happy because I truly believe uh, in your brand and what you're doing is just fantastic. So that was my big news. Really, really happy about this. Um, and I think we can now get started with finished objects because I do have quite a few and I am really happy about them as well because I'm stressing now. <laughs> so the first finished object is still a little bit damp because as per usual I only finished it the night before. Also I need to calm down because all of this excitement I don't want to make you guys nervous <laughs> but um, yeah deep breaths and now 
need to calm down a little bit. So this project is still a little bit damp, but I have finished it. It is my Christmas sweater from last year. This is what it looks like. I've shown this the past two times uh, in my podcast episodes, I believe. This is a sweater pattern by Skin Dead Knits. It's called the Festive York Pullover, I believe. Beautiful pattern. You have lots and lots of these motifs you can have all over colour work. You can only do half the yolk. You can swip, no, you can swap and choose uh, whatever chart you want to have in your sweater, and it's really versatile. So I finally finished it. Last year I stopped um, before the sleeves. I finished, kind of finished the body. I only had the rib left to do. So I finished the ribbing and I now have two sleeves as well. Okay, where to start? Let's start with um, the yarn. So the yarn is super soft holds super soft in bleached white and the red is Bokhara. I don't know if that is pronounced correctly but this is what it looks like. I still have a full skein left and just a tiny bit from the other one. I don't know what happened. I made the I believe I made the smallest size and this is the recommended or one of the recommended yarns I I remember I bought this yarn when I was in an accounting lecture last year anyways I'm really happy with the color it also didn't bleed a lot which is good I've had uh, way worse uh, color bleeds especially with red uh, yarn before and it did bloom a lot Last time I complained that it's very, very holy, that the yarn is very rough on my fingers uh, whilst knitting it. And then lots of you guys actually told me that I have to wash the sweater more often than normally. And I should use dish soap because this yarn is known for having a lot of spinning oil in it. So when you lose a little, when you use, a little bit of a dish soap it will remove the oil and then it will bloom and I'm so happy that I listened to you guys and that you told me this because I forgot about it again because it is it did bloom really nicely and it did fill out all of those holy gaps um, I really should have done like a before and after because yes you can still see through it but it was way worse uh, last time and I'm not sure if I would get this yarn again I have to say I feel like I found better 100% wool um, yarns that are also affordable like this yarn like Fena Water um, because I'm just not 100% happy with it but it is good to have tried it I'm happy that I did it and I'm still happy with the end product I've not worn it yet I've not tried it on yet I did try it on before I blocked it um pardon me uh, I did try it on before I blocked it uh, and what happened was that the yoke was a good fit around the bust but the back was up by my neck which was a little bit concerning to me because it did not lie flat the collar did not lie flat it was like like up here and that made it look really weird so I'm gonna try it on I did stretch it around the yoke a little bit more and uh, to see if I can get more room around the shoulders to make it lie flat and with the motifs I think I'm also happy I feel like the camera always picks it up a little bit better than in real life you can still see that it is handmade that it is a hand knitted garment because it's not as uniform and that's completely my fault because I when I knit this last year I have I was having troubles with floats and I caught them 
not enough and I pulled them too tightly so it was um, pulling a lot and you can still see that especially in the white uh, yarn because you have these stretched out stitches like here and there but yeah let's try it on I hope I don't rip out everything okay it is a tight fit uh, that's purely due to the size that I chose uh, it is smaller than my bust circumference because I did want to have a tight fit and a little bit of negative ease but I think it looks good it's a good length the sleeves are nice and tight. I'm happy with that. I think I can wear that as my uh, Christmas jumper. It still does a little bit of the getting higher um, around the neck, the ribbing. I also cast on too tightly, so this is very tight uh, to get around my head. But I think it looks good. What do you think, guys? Yeah, I'm happy with that. You do have short rows in the back, which is why it's a little bit confusing to me why it would go higher um, up the neck, but maybe that's because of the yoke depth. Because I feel like because this is right on, like bang on in my armpit, it all scrunches up here. Ah, oh, that's really good. I did make a mistake, I have to say. When I put this aside last year, I put a little note on my uh, barber cards to when I come back that I know which needle sizes I used. And on the ribbing, I said oh, I wrote three millimeter needles for ribbing, but then I checked my Ravelry page and it said that I actually used 2.75 millimeters. So the rib is correct on the on the cuffs here, but it's not correct here on the normal hem. It is looser and it is holy and more stretched out, but I didn't want to go back and uh, redo the whole bottom rib because that took forever especially with this yarn because it is very very rough on my hands oh, I'm really happy with that I think I'm gonna leave that on now for the rest <laughs> of the episode it's still a bit damp around my uh, around my elbow ah whatever I bought these clips I know I'm always got going on a tangent but I bought these clips because I thought that they would look nice I wanted to have something to keep the hair out of my face but they don't really stay in place they just slide so I don't know anyways that is my first uh, finished object very happy with that and then my second finished object is I finished my mom's uh, socks last time I had one sock already now I have the full pair just a standard vanilla sock uh, 60 I cast on 60 stitches it is a bit big I don't know I, I think I have to size down um, a quarter of a needle size I'm always using two and a half millimeter needles and I feel like it's just too big around the leg and when you join after the after you made the gusset here this bit it's always a bit too big so I think for the next socks I'm gonna try uh, using 2.25 millimeter needles instead of 2.5 so yeah I finished the first pair of my Christmas gifts which is really good because like I said I'm stressing and then I finished another pair of socks this is for my friend I have two socks now as well I made the leg a little bit shorter I did not ask for any like measurements or anything I just did it because I feel like he always wears the socks multi-layered so he doesn't just wear one single pair so even if they are too big, it can always be the sock that goes over all the other socks. <laughs> and yeah, he does have big feet. 
Uh, I'm really happy with the yarn. Oh, I forgot to tell you about the yarn, sorry. So this is yarn uh, that I bought from Beautiful Knitters in London. This is called Aloe Sock Wool, 75% uh, superwash wool, 25% polyamide from here at the garden. Here we go. I've showed this quite a few times now. Uh, this is what it looks like. I'm really happy with the pattern. I think it's gorgeous and it's very unisex as well. So it can be worn both uh, by male and female people. And yeah, very happy with that. So I can now package them up and gift them soon. And for my mum's socks, um, guess I have to go into whips already <laughs> because the next one is a whip. This is chaotic. <laughs> This is a uh, West Yorkshire Spinner Signature 4 ply in the colour Robin. So I got my mum's socks uh, out of it. She has a white cuff and right now I'm working on my brother's socks. And he's got a brown cuff. I'm not sure if I will be able to make my socks as well because I'm really kind of sick of making socks now. I'm not a sock knitter. I have the urge to make socks at Christmas time every year but I've made two, four, five, six, seven socks in the past month and a bit so I'm kind of socked out to be honest but I have to finish it because I did want to so this will be my brother's Christmas gift as well and I wanted to have a um, like matching sock set I guess uh, with my family that was the idea behind it because I have uh, a lot of this yarn of the West Yorkshire spinners and the contrasting color for both of them are Lana Grossa mile and wide very standard you can get that yarn here basically anywhere in any shop probably even supermarkets by now um, but yeah this is what it looks like I have already joined once again to have the correct um, width after the heel turn I am a tiny bit worried though my brother has big feet but they also vary with shoe size so normally he's a 45 in European shoe sizes and I cast on 68 stitches. I'm wondering if that's not too big. I probably should have done 64, but I have this um, table where it says what stitch count you need for what shoe size. So I kind of went off that table. Maybe, like I said, I shouldn't have and just trusted my gut because these are wide. These are very wide socks. Um, but then again, they felt over time, especially because you put them in the wash. I know my family is not very careful with these socks um, and they are going to go into the normal wash and they will felt eventually. So I'm not stressing about it, but I wish I made a, um, I wish I just trusted my gut and started with a smaller stitch count. My hands are cramping. I've knit so many small circumference things over the last few weeks. I've made the socks and actually I forgot to tell you about uh, this sweater. I actually made a mistake with the sleeves on this. I actually knit three sleeves instead of only two because I was already done with the sleeve and then I thought it was weird. I messed up the decreases so what happened was that the decreases started wandering and not being in one straight line they started to come forward with every round because i would move the beginning of round by one stitch uh, so it was very obvious where the decreases were because if you hold the hand like this and it you have like a line like a spiral going up here everyone can see that so i had to rip the sleeve back 
so that's why small circumferences are making my hands crampy and not very happy so I need to be careful with that and just take a few more breaks let me know how your gift knitting is going if you have already finished everything or if you're frantically trying to finish up the last uh, bits Christmas is really close this year I forgot about it once again I was supposed to do vlogmas and then again life just happened and I it was just a bit too much all at once uh, so yeah let me know how you're doing with your presents and we should get going with the next whip every time I look at myself in the viewfinder I'm like oh this looks so nice I don't know is that tooting my own horn I don't know I think as an it I kind of have to anyways speaking about sleeves this is an absolute monstrosity of a project I was just words don't come easily to me today <laughs> especially for this one because it's just so big and it's also very messy and you will see why in a minute this is the Aoife cardigan by Petite Knit I've been working on this for months now as well and Cardigans are definitely not my favourite. I'm so looking forward to finishing this because I want to wear it but I also just want to have it done. So I can't remember where I was last time if I even or when I showed it to you last but since then this is what it looks like. Since then I have finished almost a full sleeve. I'm currently on the rib section and I started the second sleeve because with the small circumference and the rib okay rib is not my favorite thing to knit as well because it's the pearls that are the issue for me they hurt my wrists if I do them too long so I needed variety so last night when I got to the ribbing section I thought let me just do a little bit of the rib and then I can continue or I can start the other sleeve because that's just plain stockinette. So you already have two different uh, balls of yarn hanging just on the sleeves and then <laughs> you have the body where there's also some yarn hanging because when I tried it on last night I found out that it's actually a really good length and if I put on a 10 centimeter rib it would be too long if I added any more stockinette. Um, so I'm also ready for the rib at the bottom which is great news because I've almost got both sleeves and the bottom rib which means the only thing that's left after it is the button band which is also rib. Um, but at least that's all in one go and not many different pieces put together. So hopefully this will be finished relatively soon. Again, I'm not making any promises because whenever I say that, it's just never happening. Um, but in general, I'm really happy with it. I chose this really nice neutral. It's like a beigey, greyish neutral, which I think fits really well into my wardrobe. And you can really see the construction very nicely. So you start with the back panel. This is the back. You start with the back. And then by the shoulder, you have almost like a saddle shoulder construction and a setting sleeve here. And then you have the raglan detail. It's it's a really cool construction. I've never seen something like this before. But then again, I also have to say I've never made a setting sleeve or a saddle shoulder. So I don't know if that is the construction or if I'm just excited about something so minor. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but yeah, this is what it looks like. Happy with the progress. Um, about the yarn, I'm using Drops uh, Charisma. 
it is a super wash wool in the color 77 and then, like i said it's a very nice color and i just really like working with this yarn i have a lot of it and it's just really nice because it's very round it's not too itchy and the color selection is also great i don't think there's anything else i can say about uh, this project other than it is very heavy and big to maneuver so i'm hoping to finish the sleeves soon so i can start on the bottom and just get it done because i need cardigans i can't just always wear sweaters because they're not always appropriate for the garment that i want to wear and i already got the buttons so it's kind of already finished um from I don't know if I'm making any sense. Forget what I said. Um, I don't think I can put this back in this bag because this is not it. And then the other sweater is the Tuku. I know you've seen these projects a million times before, um, but I'm just really trying to finish a lot of the things that I have before I start something new uh, because that also makes me feel good and accomplished. <laughs> This is the Tuku by the Petite Knitter and I'm currently at the body section. I might start with the sleeves because sleeves are actually not as bad as you think to knit. They go really fast, especially uh, when you have still something like for the body left. It's just less time <laughs> because it's smaller. But from since last time I put a marker here I need this much uh, I don't know if that's a lot or not but I focused on other things and it just looks so good I'm always surprised when I pull this out again how good it actually looks and the yarn I'm using is 100% British wool by Woolly Knit in cinnamon brown and white all right now those were all projects that you've seen before now we get into a tiny project that you've not seen before because I only cast this on uh, I don't know a week ago or something I am making my very first Sophie scarf I've wanted to make one for a while especially because when I'm going to work and it's not as cold outside but I still would like something around my neck I'm really lacking in a garment like that so that's why the Sophie scarf is perfect and this is what I have so far. It goes by really fast and I'm almost done with the increases so I can start decreasing. And the colour is also really nice. I have the label over there, hang on. This yarn is Mayo Fine Merino yarn. It is made in Italy. Um, 50 grams, you get 175 meters in the colour wheat. And it is a sport weight, I think, 24 uh, stitches for 10 centimeters. I'm using three and a half millimeter needles, just like the pattern says. I'm not too bothered if this is going to be shorter, longer, whatever. I just want to have the finished object, really. This is completely a, um, what is it? progress not process knit I always confuse these things I just want the finished object and I am almost by the halfway point let me know if you've made a Sophie scarf before I know they are where they were all the hype uh, last year over Christmas because they are great Christmas uh, gifts because they are so fast um, but I'm really enjoying it. I don't find it as difficult to uh, count my rows because I have two stitch markers. One here for my last uh, increase and one here. And I just always swap them. You can count on the I-cord on what row number you are. So that kind of makes it a little bit easier for me at least. That was the only... A new cast on really that I have that you've not seen before but I have another project that's been floating around uh, in my whip 
corner I guess you can say and I started this in summer and I might pick it up once I finish all the other projects uh, because I, again I do want to have a finished object I just could not be bothered to work on it let me dig it out it is the porcelain sweater <clears throat> by what is it called? Lini Knits or something like that? Could that be right? This is what I have so far. It is a drop shoulder const uh, construction and you do have colour work but it's an absolute gorgeous design and I just want it. This is what I have so far. I already joined in the round, just, <laughs> and I'm currently on the second of the three colour work stripes. If you can remember, because you've been there uh, already, when I started this project, working flat with colour work is not great. I really didn't like it it took me a really really long time uh, but I did it because I've already joined in the round you do have a very wide circumference because it is a drop shoulder and that's purely why I have not worked on this uh, anymore because of the length of the chart but since I finished my Kara sweater and that also had a really long repeat I feel like I can tackle this um, and at least make some progress on it because I think it looks really good. The yarn I'm using is Drops Charisma in colour 1, it's just the normal white, and in the chocolate brown, which is colour 4. Really nice dark brown. I wanted these two colours specifically to have a really high contrast, but what I didn't think about is that you might potentially see the darker colour through the lighter colour because of the floats. And that is kind of what has happened. It's not too too bad, but it's not as white. These sections here are not as white as if it were just the pure white. I might just be picky. Uh, but that is just what I have noticed and you have to keep in mind if you also want to tackle this project that you will see the floats of the whatever colour you have um, behind, you will see them through the lighter colour. My floats are really nice uh, in the back. This is what it looked like. Uh, I really started to catch them every second to third stitch to avoid uh, puckering. I think I managed that really well and yeah I'm gonna start picking that up again once like I said once I finish the uh, the bigger projects well, not bigger projects but the other ones like the cardigan which I really want to uh, finish and you work on I think these are four millimeter needles probably I'm pretty sure I'm making the smaller size as well. Like I said, you can go to my Ravelry page. I know for sure that I have this project uh, on there and you can read through. I don't think I have any notes yet, but the details of the yarn and size, etc. Okay, so I don't have any yarn acquisitions, but I do have some acquisitions once again. Or should I say one acquisition? Um, I have so much yarn that I really don't know where to put it anymore so I have to be very very careful with what I buy and I can't just buy like I have to knit more before I buy some more yarn to yeah get a little bit of space back because <laughs> it's getting a little bit out of hand uh, so I don't have any yarn but I've, I've got something that I have been looking for a year now and I finally made the executive decision to just go for it to just buy it and see how I like it and it is sock blockers this might not be exciting to you but it is very much so to me because I want to have my socks look nice and look pretty uh, once they're blocked hence why 
these look so gorgeous and flat and the rib nice and even because I put them on the sock blocker. I got these from a shop called Candy Yarn. She is in the Ukraine, I believe. Um, and it did take a little bit of time, I think two or three weeks to arrive. I got them from her Etsy shop because uh, she did have an offer on Black Friday. So that's when I got them. And so far I'm really happy with them. To me, what it had to have is different sizes. Because sock blockers, I saw a lot of them, like wooden sock blockers, which are also fine. I specifically wanted metal ones. Um, but I wanted some where you get more sizes than just one. Because I have a lot of different... Uh, shoe like different people in my life have different shoe sizes and it's very difficult to get uh, only those sizes when you have to leave out some for example i am a size 38 uh, but my brother is 45 so i wanted a range that goes from 20, uh, 38 to 45 because what if my mom likes bigger socks and she needs a size 40 I don't know if that makes any sense to anyone else, but it did to me. So I wanted uh, multiple sizes in the set. And this one was the best that I found because it goes from... What's the smallest one? Is it this one? This is uh, 34 to 40, uh, 35. This is, yeah. So it's from... 34, 45, all the way up to uh, 46 to 47. Oh god, this is not going well. <laughs> so you have a whole bunch uh, of sizes and they work really well. I think the socks dry very well as well because you have the space in between um, the the metal so what I did was I hung them up on um, like over my bathtub to get the initial water out and then I could just pop them uh, by the radiator and they would dry really fast so those are my new this is my new addition to my knitting corner they are really big, so I don't know where I'm going to put all of these. I need like a hook or something so I can hang them up and not have them lying around. Um, but yeah, if you want to get them as well, like I said, it's from the shop called Candy Yarn. Uh, she's got her own website and I got it from her Etsy shop. So that was the only yarn or the only acquisition should I say uh, that I have for you today and I hope you're doing well let me know what you are knitting on at the moment um, I don't know when we're going to see each other next time because next weekend is Christmas so I might make a video I might not who knows I don't because life is just a little bit crazy at the moment um, my mom's been sick uh, my brother is uh, also has also hurt himself and work is just a little bit all over the place so I also don't know where I am at the moment uh, but I th feel like that is typical Christmas I'm also not really in the Christmas spirit which is making me really sad because Christmas is one of the best times of the year for me and I wanted to buy some Christmas decorations but I just could not find any in the shops. So either people have already bought all of it or there is just not a big stock uh, of Christmas decorations this year. But yeah, enough about my rant. I hope, like I said, you're doing well and like and share my content to someone that you feel like would also enjoy it. Also, you can tag me on Instagram whilst you're watching this uh, podcast episode 
um, and I don't know leave a nice comment down below and I'm gonna see you next time if I don't see you before Christmas happy Christmas if you're celebrating it and I wish you all the best for the holidays that everything goes well and you're healthy and fine and also your family and I'm gonna see you whenever next time is happy knitting bye